no human has ever asked a chicken um, with an answer. I think that's the, the key point. Um, with an answer of saying, "Is can I take your eggs?" And there's no chicken that ever said, um, "Yes, you can take my eggs." And, uh, and I think taking something from somebody and uh, and not asking is exploitation. She said, this isn't very dignified. You want to talk to her? No. I started by ha just having them here, because that back when I started with the chickens, I was showing horses and was at a different barn. And then when that barn closed down and I moved my horses, um, I took the chickens out there, because that's when I was going through cancer, and I just didn't want to have to take care of them. And then I wanted my chickens back, but they were really old and they weren't laying, so I got new chickens and my friend and I were like, everybody's always begging for eggs, let's just get a lot of chickens and sell eggs. And so we got 36 chickens. We still have 32 of them. And these four, I keep their eggs for me and my family. And the other chickens, we are layers, and I get about 15 dozen a week and I sell them all. In fact, right now I've got like six people waiting for eggs next week. So, I mean, I sell, we sell as many eggs as we can get them to lay. Now, you can say they're organic, but I can't guarantee that, like my kids will throw their frosted flakes out here, and, it, and so they're not technically, because th that unless those are organic frosted flakes I happen to have. No, they're not organic, because we feed them table scraps. They're really good recyclers, and so we, anything that we scrape off the plates, just about, they'll eat, you know. And they lay better if they get a lot of natural light. So we put a clear roof on so they get as much sunlight as possible. And she pecks at the insulation. There's a cute factor. Um, who, you know, if they're fluffy and they're cute, they get a lot more attention as, as being protected than something that's slimy and we can't see or we can't relate to or we don't have a direct relationship with. Just kind of find out where they're coming from and um, what they know about raising chicks. We have a little tip tip sheet that we give people that it explains the really important things that they need to know mm -hmm. when they get their chicks home. Mm -hmm. um, we did, we won't sell one chick to anybody because chickens are social animals. So we try to make sure that people know they really we sell should have to chicken work. feed. Okay. We sell um, organic chicken feed mostly. Um, which we find most people prefer. They really are more concerned about organic feed with their own chickens in a backyard situation when they're gonna be eating the, the eggs. Um, we really also encourage that they feed their kitchen waste to chickens because a lot of the scrap that you produce when you cook, you know, carrot peelings or little bits of cilantro or that your chickens will love that and they'll eat it, you know, they'll eat your watermelon rinds. So um, we, feel like chickens are actually in many ways the most sustainable backyard pet because they actually eat your kitchen waste and um, so we really like that part of having chicken on a farm and I did a lot of this stuff as I was growing up I had chickens and we did canning and you know all of that and then I came to the city to go to college I actually went to Hamlin University and uh, met someone from Minneapolis and got married and settled down in the cities and always kind of thought we would maybe move back out again but at some point thought, well, we love living in the city. And so we realized we could have chickens in our backyard and we could have a good vegetable garden and we could do all the same stuff while still living in the city. The main motive is similar to people growing their own food. They really want to have more connection to their food. They want to have more control over how their food is raised, how they get their food. 
so they're a little bit you know just concerned about the health of their food and the safety mm -hmm. I think that really is the main reason there are also in Minnesota in the whole Midwest there's a whole culture of farming that most people come from somewhere mm -hmm. in their background you know their grandparents or their parents and I think for a lot of people who, who are in this area, it's a little bit nostalgic too. Like yeah. you remember that grandma had chickens and you remember what it was like to have chickens around and young families with children really mm -hmm. want their kids to see what it's like to have they're, backyard they're treated chickens. really much better in a backyard situation. They have more space, they have um, less competition from each other. Mm -hmm. um, they're generally allowed to live longer and we don't see the need to do things like de-beak them to keep them from pecking each other. Um, uh, I think this, just the space, the, the, you know, being able to be out and in the yard is really nice. I mean, some of the hens can be large and aggressive. And yeah. <laughs> This is a good study break for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we get a lot of people, especially families, that just come by to take a peek at the chicks when we get them in. Which is, we're like a little chick petting zoo here. <laughs> so do you feel like you really bond with your chickens at home? Like, yeah. Do you name them? And oh yeah, absolutely yeah. we name them. Of course we have kids, so they name yeah. them. Uh, yeah. Th um, but yeah, it's, it's really fun to have them around. We have an obligation, we feel, to the chickens and the people in the city and their neighbors mm -hmm. to make sure everybody knows what they're doing. We just encourage them to think it through, make sure they understand their own feelings about these yeah. animals because, yep. um, you know, it's not like a conventional pet. between pet. They're not as cuddly as a dog, but mm -hmm. they're not, you know, they're cuddlier than a reptile or a fish <laughs> or something. Yeah. So, and they're interesting animals. Uh, you know, they have their little, you know, in a flock, they have their own little social structure and mm -hmm. they, um, they have personalities and it's calming and nice to have them poking around in your yard. Permitting process in St. Paul, everybody who comes to us is interested in making sure they're doing it right. Yeah. And so they're sort of by definition interested in the well-being of the animal. Uh, the folks who don't come to us, the folks who are raising animals for other reasons, uh, I, I can't speak to that because <coughs> there are uh, uh, there's cockfighting, there's people who raise animals for uh, what I would consider the wrong reason. Two ways to look at the chicken. Either, you know, we've done a great job domesticating it, or they've done a really great job of being everywhere on the planet. And now we have lots of little flocks and small, you know, in the city. So are chickens really the clever ones here by <laughs> propagating their species throughout? Anyway, so I would ask, I would just ask them, so what do you think of us? You know, yeah. what, what's it like having us uh, take care of you? And, you know, are we doing a good job? Could we do better? What do you do with your chickens that stop, or your hens that stop laying eggs? We only have one in our experience, Goldilocks. She is <laughs> our, our the head of our little flock. Mm -hmm. And we had this discussion with our kids early on. We said, you know, this is the life cycle. Mm -hmm. What happens when the hen stops laying eggs? What do we think, you know? Mm -hmm. could, could we eat Goldilocks? Yeah. And the answer was, I think so. <laughs> But the truth is we can't. Yeah, Not a normal pet. I mean, it should be, and <laughs> yes. it's getting that way. But mm -hmm. it's um, even as far as the city's concerned, there's mm -hmm. a different permitting process, and mm -hmm. everyone wants to treat it like an exotic animal when it is <laughs> probably the least exotic. Yeah. I mean, domesticated, right. most domesticated. We offer both a conventional feed and an organic feed. We try to um, we try not to dictate to people what they must do. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. But we do focus on providing sort of that uh, sustainable organic and local as far as we can we try to source all of the as many things as we can it's not not you know always possible i think it helps uh humans more right it helps humans because they're decreasing the environmental impact carbon footprint right yes. um so they're not moving them back and forth and if we were to say well is it a better life for chickens than being in a factory farm mm -hmm. um yeah of course they're not having their beaks burned and, 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 <coughs> and cut off yeah. they're um, not being shoved a lot of hormones, pesticides, and, and sprays, uh, and yeah. and so that's great. But is it really beneficial for the chicken? Right? They're still being.
I think it's a good thing. I think that it, it's good when people have healthy relationships with animals and their local environment. So for those who can do it well, um, you have a relationship with the animals and the land there, and I think it can be healthy um, as long as you do it well. But I don't know how it to do it. Can be, it can yeah. be unhealthy too, I imagine. Um, if, if people don't have the right conditions, don't keep things, how chickens like them. I don't know what chickens like. Benefits so. to not supporting factory farming, not supporting systems where animals are oppressed. I want every living creature on earth to be happy and healthy. Um, and there is certain aspect of cycle of life stuff that goes on. Um, and that's a part of life and death for every type yeah, of creature. A factory farm bird where you have to keep so many in a small environment uh, or even non factory farm, but if they don't have enough environment, if they don't have a chance to be in natural light, if they don't have a chance to go peck on the ground and scratch their feet. Mm -hmm. I want them to do more than just lay eggs. Yeah, and if, if they have to get to the point where you're debeaking, that's something seriously wrong with the conditions. Animals should not feel that afraid and scared. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, if it were a healthy environment, that would be cool. And so I would, I would much rather see the chickens be happy. <laughs> so I think that's that awesome. That says a yeah. lot about the people's mm -hmm. connection with food. If you can disconnect and, and not think about what that food went through to get to you, that's, I don't think that's a healthy disconnect there. I, you know, I think you have to, you have to be aware of what's going on. And if, if you feel that whatever, you know, relationship you have with an animal uh, and you're willing to eat it, I would respect that. I don't know if I could do that, mm -hmm. but people should know what they're eating. When I was growing up, um, I knew a foster family that had some chickens and it was kind of hard on a lot of the kids there because they would eat the chickens when they died. And some of those kids had some extra issues anyways, and so they would make friends with these chickens and play with them. And then I think that, I think they didn't do the best job there necessarily with um, dealing with how it affected the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and so it sounds, it sounds like some people are good about teaching their kids about the cycle of life and having discussions, open discussions about things, but making a friend and then coming home one day to your friend being on your plate instead of in the barn would be really not be a good thing. I think we all have a little bit of the truth and if we kind of worked a little bit better together and respected each other, we'd figure that out. But, uh, but I think, can we live a life and eat healthy without exploiting anyone? And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm.